That's good. Yeah. Ready? Yep. All right. Um, I'll try to keep it short and sweet. I don't have a whole lot of like machinery I'm building, obviously, or anything, but. I'm, all, I'm working on confinement with Bob Deck and Jack Amar. Um, basically, relativistic and quantum mechanical effects of atomic and subatomic confinement, whether it be particles or atoms. Or, um, so everybody's aware of the uncertainty principle, obviously. And when you shorten, when you make your uncertainty in spatial coordinates, obviously it gets smaller and smaller. Your uncertainty in momentum goes up. And therefore, you you know your momentum your momentum is directly related to your energy, so the uncertainty in energy goes up. And obviously, you can just see over from that equation that's your kinetic energy. Um, that would that your kinetic energy goes up as well. And uh, usually, the rule of thumb there's not really a general number, but if your uncertainty in energy gets to a certain level, like say maybe ten percent of rest mass or something. You want to start getting your relativistic energy calculations by using your gamma operator here from special relativity. And so moving on from that, we have just our normal Schrodinger equation and uh, find out how the quantum state of a system evolves over time. And you can figure out your probability densities, which is your wave function. And over here, you have your hydrogen atom one, but basically you can use this to find out, you know, almost anything about the system you're working with, the energy levels and whatnot. And uh, Klein, there's a relativistic equation, a wave equation called the klein gordon equation, and it was a basically an attempt to unify relativity and the Schrodinger equation together. And so you can just take your regular energy operators and momentum operators from the Schrodinger equation, and you plug those into this uh, relativistic energy equation, and you kind of just do some algebra, and you come up with this equation right here, but this is neglecting a, uh, a potential, so basically free particle. And your solutions just end up being regular plane wave solutions, but the problem is it doesn't account for spin, so basically spinless particles, and actually the Higgs boson was um, the first fundamental particle that can actually be described by this equation, given that it's, you're not having any boundary, you know, potentials or anything like that. And it produces uh, negative energy states, which they thought was a problem at the time, but obviously that was just kind of a precursor to antiparticles. But then the biggest problem is you have negative energy or negative probability densities, which obviously is not allowed. And um, oh, by the way, going back to the uh, uncertainty principle, the reason they have to keep building these larger and larger colliders, like the Large Hadron Colliders, they're trying to probe distances, you know, like a thousand times of a proton, smaller than a proton. So they keep having to ramp up the energy because the uncertainty energy is getting so big. Um, let's see here. And then, obviously, Dirac went off the klein gordon equation and he made it a uh, first order equation by using, you know, like four vectors and these matrices and whatnot. It gets really complicated, so I'm not going to kind of go into it. But it does describe spin, half spin particles, such as fermions, obviously. And uh, obviously, the best equation right now that we know of that can do relativity and quantum mechanics. Um, so basically where my research is going is there's been a lot of interest in confining atoms to really small distances. And so I want to try to take a hydrogen atom confined in a spherical well of some height and basically do the relativistic calculations instead of just doing the normal Schrodinger equation. Um, most of the papers I've seen, I don't have the links right now, but all the, all the calculations are non-relativistic, which doesn't make any sense because you're combining it to such a small space. And you have to take into account the potential from the nucleus and then your barrier. So you have like these two boundaries. 
And uh, so, yeah, we need to use the rock equation. And the solutions can get kind of messy if you're not doing a free particle, obviously, like I'm doing. And you end up with like these horrible, awful hypergeometric functions that basically you have to use a program for. I think I'm going to use Maple. I think that's what Rick said. And uh, so, potential applications are quantum dots. Um, like in TV, they, they use them in solar cells and in TVs, and then um, this is kind of a far out thing that I'm not going to worry about, but low energy nuclear reactions, which I'm not really going to touch on. You can press out as well. All right. Any questions from Jacob? We got, we got one coming here. Oh. So basically, you want to determine how the confinement affects the energy and, and using relativistic equations instead of the non relativistic ones that everyone's using. Yeah, basically, yeah, there's, I don't know, I don't know why they're neglecting relativity at all, but. Who's next? I forgot to check. Thanks again, Jake. I'm going to fix that monitor real quick, too.